Episode 26, The Best Night Ever. This is the final episode of Season 1, and is the outcome of the plotline that was set up in Episode 3, with the main characters going to the Grand Galloping Gala. I'm Count Lurchalot, and this is Lukewarm Television. The episode starts with Pinkie Pie excited about the gala being tonight, while Twilight is trying to study a spell she wants to do in preparation for the gala. Twilight then reveals she's done, and shows what she aims to do for the gala. Using her magic, Twilight turns a simple apple into a great carriage. I thought I was watching My Little Pony, not Cinderella, but hey, I like both of those, so can't complain. Twilight then reveals this was only one spell she intended to cast. She then asks Fluttershy if she bought a group of mice as requested. Fluttershy says yes and puts the mice on the ground. Twilight then uses her magic to turn them in what I can only describe as a hybrid between mice and horses. Again, I guess they're really going for the Cinderella vibe here. However, after seeing how big the mice have grown, Rarity's cat Opalescence decides to attack them and she scares them off. Even though those horses were supposed to pull the carriage to the gala, Rarity isn't worried. She then uses her charm to convince a group of stallions to pull the carriage for them. Infatuated, the stallions agree. Twilight even points out that this was an obvious solution because, you know, they're all horses to begin with. After the opening credits, the main characters are getting ready for the gala. Spike then asks if he can come in, but Rarity says no as they're getting dressed. But then Applejack points out something so obvious it's funny, she points out how they don't actually wear clothes half the time, so there is no real issue. As a guy with two older sisters though, I have to side with Rarity here. Spike is excited for the gala, because not only are they going to his and Twilight's hometown of Cantalot, but they'll get to hang out with each other all night. But, as Rainbow Dash points out, they all have other plans. But Twilight tells him not to worry, as they'll all find time to spend together once they get there. Turns out Spike had planned a fun night for them. Wanting to get there as quickly as possible, Spike does the stupidest thing imaginable. He tells the stallions to hoo ya, forgetting that they themselves are sentient, and they scold Spike for this. Upon arriving at Cantalot, they get out and Twilight expresses that they are to have the best night ever as all their dreams are about to come true. You'll find out soon, however, that the title of this episode is really ironic. This leads to another musical number where they all sing about what they plan to do at the gala. If you'll remember, Fluttershy has wanted to come to the gala so she can see the princess's garden and all the lovely animals in it and how she wants to befriend them. Applejack has come to the gala to open up an apple stand to sell apples and other apple-related treats. She wants to do this to raise more money for her farm. Rarity came to the gala for the most cringy reason. She wants to meet the most eligible bachelor in Equestria, a prince by the name of Prince Blueblood. And she wants to have a real fairy tale romance. And look, I like Cinderella as much as the next guy, but oh my god, this is just so cringeworthy to watch. Rainbow Dash, of course, came because she knew that the Wonderbolts would be at the gala and she wants to hang out with them. And again, Pinky has the most misguided reason for wanting to come as she thinks this will be the greatest party ever. She's in for a rude awakening in that it's not the type of party she would normally attend. And finally, Twilight just wants to spend time with Princess Celestia and talk to her about magic and everything she's learnt since moving to Ponyville. I know it would be a big honour to go to this, but if I was invited, I honestly wouldn't come because I just know I wouldn't have a good time. I'm not really a formal person. Spike finally expresses why he thinks it's going to be the best night ever, because they're all going to spend time together. But once the song's over, they immediately disperse. Poor Spike. Twilight immediately goes to see Princess Celestia and tells her that she wants to spend the night catching up with her. Celestia agrees and asks Twilight to stay by her side so they can spend a lot of time together. Rarity immediately spots Prince Blueblood and goes to pursue him. Fluttershy immediately follows a bird to the garden and she even thinks they're calling for her. We then see Applejack set up her apple cart and she immediately gets a customer, as one of the Wonder Bolts immediately buys one of her apple pies. She thinks the rest of her night will be very lucrative. It won't be. Rainbow Dash is about to follow the Wonder Bolts into the VIP, and she manages to make a good first impression after she rescues the pie one of them has just bought from Applejack. Then another one by the name of Spitfire actually remembers Rainbow Dash as the pony that saved them on Cloudsdale. Impressed by her skills again, Spitfire offers Rainbow Dash to hang out with them. Pinky still thinks she's going to have a great party. Again, Pinky, you've really misinterpreted the type of party this is. She even starts jumping around and singing, and all the other ponies aren't amused by her antics. And as much as I love Pinky, I can't help but cringe at her here. Rarity finally meets Prince Blueblood, and he appears to be everything she'd wished for. However, that's quickly shut down, as he doesn't seem to be as generous as she was hoping. Fluttershy is also disappointed, because she finds out that it wasn't birds calling out to her. It was just another pony working as a groundskeeper who loves to whistle while he works. However, her spirits are lifted when she sees the animals in the garden, but they immediately run away as she approaches them, which disappoints her, as animals generally love Fluttershy. 
We then see that unfortunately Rainbow Dash isn't able to spend much time with the Wonderbolts as they're busy talking with other party guests. Twilight is having the same problem as Princess Celestia is too busy greeting and talking to other party guests to spend any time with her. Meanwhile, Applejack isn't making as many sales as she was hoping to. In fact, after an hour, she hasn't made a single sale, and for obvious reasons, Pinky isn't able to party like she would like to. Meanwhile, we see that Prince Blueblood isn't exactly what Rarity dreamed he would be. In fact, he's actually a giant jerk. They all finish off by pointing out that this night isn't turning out like they would have hoped. However, the main characters aren't deterred and they are still determined to make this the best night ever. Fluttershy resorts to actually trying to capture some of the animals so she can meet them. However, the only thing she manages to capture is the groundskeeper from before. <laughs> Rainbow Dash decides she needs to make the Wonderbolts notice her. So she tries to create an accident, and although successful, it doesn't catch the attention of the Wonderbolt. If you ask me, she only made a fool of herself. Prince Blueblood proves to be an even bigger jerk when he forces Rarity to clean up a spill with her cloak. She literally made that dress for this night. Pinkie Pie tries to liven up the night by getting the band to play what I can only assume is the pony version of the Hokey Pokey. However, all she manages to do is make a giant fool of herself and it's honestly really cringe to watch. And someone finally points out that this isn't that type of party. Again, Pinky, you seriously misinterpreted the type of night this would be. However, this still gives Pinky the wrong idea. Applejack then finally gets another customer in Rarity and Prince Blueblood, but Prince Blueblood refuses to pay for the apple fritters. Why? I have no idea. He's a prince. I'm sure he could afford them. However, since Applejack is a nice friend, she says it's on the house for Rarity. However, Prince Blueblood continues to be a giant jerk as he hates Applejack's treats, calling them carnival food, and says he's going to the buffet for some hors d'oeuvres. I really hate this guy. I think I hate him the most out of any pony I've seen this season. However, this just makes Applejack think she needs to dress her treats up to make them look more fancy. For some reason, Fluttershy has also resorted to setting more traps, and she's literally become the Wicked Witch of the West. However, she goes so crazy, she ends up just capturing herself. And like I said from before, Pinky misinterpreted the type of party this is, and now she's bought in a turntable. Pinky, again, you're my favourite, but you are really cringe this episode. She only makes it worse after Applejack brings in a fancy apple cake, which Pinky accidentally flips. The cake nearly hits Prince Blueblood, but then he uses Rarity as a shield. Oh my god, is this guy a jerk. However, Rarity has finally reached her breaking point and says the only thing royal about Prince Blueblood is that he's a royal pain. It's at this point that Prince Blueblood reveals that he hates getting dirty even more than Rarity does, so she does the most sensible thing possible in my opinion. She shakes all the frosting onto him. Good on you, Rarity. I'm proud of you. This eventually leads to a series of unfortunate events where the whole party starts crashing down around them. Twilight and Princess Celestia then come in and are shocked to see what has happened. Twilight then says the worst thing possible, that it can't get any worse, because then it gets worse. In her quest to make the animals love her, Fluttershy has gone completely ballistic and led them into the ballroom. This leads to an absolute frenzy, and Princess Celestia quickly tells Twilight to gather everyone else and run, and they get out of there immediately, but not before one more Cinderella reference, as Rarity loses one of her glass slippers and Pinky says now her prince will find her for sure. However, she doesn't want to deal with Prince Blueblood anymore and literally smashes it before dragging Pinky away with her. It's then revealed that Spike has been at the donut shop this entire time, which if I'm honest is probably where I would have been for all this. And for some reason they're treating this like a pub, as the shop owner asks doesn't Spike think he's had enough, but no, Spike definitely hasn't had enough. However, then the rest of the main characters come in and Spike asks how their night was. Unsurprisingly, Spike thinks it sounds more like the worst night ever, to which the other main characters agree with. Twilight, however, is scared that Princess Celestia will be mad at them for ruining the gala, but turns out Princess Celestia thinks that was the best Grand Galloping Gala ever. Princess Celestia then states that she always finds the Grand Galloping Gala awful, and the reason she invited Twilight and her friends, because she was hoping they would liven things up a bit. You know, for a royal pony, Princess Celestia is pretty chill, and Princess Celestia then points out that even though the night didn't go as planned, she's sure it didn't turn out too bad for them, and Twilight agrees because she feels that the best of friends can even turn the worst night ever into something pretty great. They then point out how the night could have been more fun, and Spike basically says, yeah, everything I wanted to do. Yeah, I want Spike's side for this. They even state that even though the night was pretty bad, being there together with everyone has truly made it the best night ever, and the episode ends with all of them laughing. And there we have it, season one of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Is it as good as I remember? Honestly, it's better, because I think coming back to this a decade later has given me a different perspective and allowed me to see things I didn't see before. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you at the next review in season two.